Well, good morning, everybody. Here's another Discovery Hall video, but this time we visit with a person in the physics department, Deanna Marshall. There's an exciting new program that you should know about, especially if you can get this video to a teacher that you know in Washington, then uh, we can get some students coming here this summer. Deanna. All right, well, this is physics. Apparently, there are people from the physics department in this building, and I think I found one right here. Oh, my gosh, Deanna. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, Hi, Nick. You literally had coffee in the break room, and I'm like, hey, how about we do this? It's a nice, quiet Friday morning. So you're, you're a, um, a good sport. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you're in the physics department. What's your job title? Um, I'm the program manager for the Northwest Earth and Space Sciences Pathways Program. Mm -hmm. And the affiliation is with NASA? The affiliation is with NASA. We are 100% funded by NASA and supported by Central Washington University. We are providing uh, STEM, NASA science-based STEM activities yeah. for grades K through 12 with an emphasis for underrepresented minority groups. We also do professional development for teachers and educators. Oh my goodness. So let's let's enjoy these posters you have right now and then I want to go outside and just visit with you a little bit. I okay. Mean, so so you have I mean this is this is new, right? This program is just getting launched as I understand it. Here at Central, yes. Yeah. Um, we were at University of Washington for about four years okay. under the direction of Robert Wingley, who unfortunately passed away mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, and we were fortunate enough to be able to bring it here to Central. Actually, Darcy Snowden was his grad, uh, postdoc grad assistant many years ago yeah. and got involved in all of this and uh, they brought it here. We're really fortunate to have it here. Oh my gosh. So so we're filming this on what is it May 13th. So there's a so there's a we're trying to get the word out about this program as soon as this summer, right? Yes. We have two summer programs for high schoolers. Okay. Our first is the Explore Mars Academy. Okay. It is a completely free residential program for students within Oregon and Washington. Preferable rising grades 9th and rising grades 10th. It will be July 31st to the 5th of August here at campus. Um, you can scan the QR code and it'll go directly to our website and you can uh, apply there. Mm -hmm. The second is our High Altitude Balloon Academy, which is where students will build a payload, all of the instrumentation, to do some scientific experiments for a uh, high altitude balloon that mm -hmm. will launch. That one is for preferably for rising 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, so a little bit of an um, older group. Uh, again, f completely free residential yeah. here on campus, July uh, 24th to the 29th. So the deadline for applying is like, what? Two, oh two my weeks goodness, from now yes, so it is. It's now. really close, and we really need students to apply. Um, <laughs> A lot has happened this year, and yeah. we've not been able to go out and promote it as much as we have in the past. Yeah. So there are lots of opportunities to apply and get in and be a part of our programs. We also have two other programs that we're hosting for uh, educators and for teachers. These are the James Webb Mini Telescope, which is for grades 3 through 12 as well as the IC World's mini missions. We will provide teachers or educators with the materials that they'll need to host the camp. We also provide a small stipend. Um, and if you go to the website or scan the QR codes, um, sign up and I can provide you with information. Oh my God. So, so, so I'm gonna see some of these folks in this building. Is some of it gonna be happening yes, here? Yes, um, the, the camps, both of our uh, enrichment programs will happen here. Okay. Um, we do the egg drop from the the third floor <laughs> right up there and take Andy. over this entire facility. Um, it's <laughs> lovely. The, the students love it. We launched the balloons for the High Altitude Balloon Academy um, from the third floor and there's a course that they have to maneuver their high altitude balloon. They have to drive it, or I'm sorry, pilot it yeah. um, through some uh, obstacles mm -hmm. and land it safely down here. And <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. 
Well, you know, you're just a, a few doors down from my office, and uh, I'm, I'm just learning with the audience here about the details of this program. I knew you guys were so excited when this, yeah. when this was, was approved, and that you're the main, uh, are you the main recruiter, the main kind of facilitator we of the are. whole thing? Um, uh, Darcy Snowden is our uh, PI yeah. and our director, yeah. um, and unfortunately she couldn't be with us today. <laughs> so, she, so I get to, yes. I, I drew the lucky straw, yes, you did. Um, and I do get to go out and recruit the students that are part of this, as well as the educators, and it's a lot of fun. Well, let's take a walk if you don't sure, mind, and, and then uh, I've got a, a landing spot for us uh, back <laughs> back in the building. But okay. I mean, you know, there's. There's lots going on, and you've been with us how long? How long have you been at Central? Uh, six and a half years. It'll be seven years in September. Mm -hmm. And until recently, you were, or you were hired to kind of be a advisor. Is that fair to say? Um, yes. I I say I read the job description and I didn't think it was a real job. Um, <laughs> it was for a recruiter advisor for the physics department. Physics, yeah. And uh, I've never. I'd never in my life heard of a college recruiting for physics. <laughs> so I didn't think it was a real job, so I applied. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, it was a real job. <laughs> Even funnier is uh, I was living in Hawaii at the time, and uh, the staff here saw my application. They're like, she's not going to move from Hawaii. Uh -huh. So they didn't think I would move from Hawaii, and I didn't think it was a real job. So we were a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you've done great things here, and I, are you still advising the physics majors as well, or is that somebody else now? Uh, that is Eva Witsett. Okay. She just recently took over as the advisor for computer science and physics, and mm -hmm. she's doing a wonderful job. Um, luckily, uh, I get to focus specifically on this program, but I do miss working with the students on a daily basis. So back to the program. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say it's just not possible this summer. I mean, it's you know the, the deadline's looming, and mm -hmm. uh, there, people already have summer plans. This is a multi-year NASA program, yes. I assume. Yes, we're very fortunate. Um, it's for at least the next four years. Oh wow! Um, so every summer, knock on wood, yep. um, if everything goes right, we'll be hosting the summer programs. Okay. And is it just a uh, students in Washington kind of a thing or it can be wider? It can be that? a whole lot wider than that. That's the great thing about it. We run a national challenge during the academic year. Um, so people as far away as New Jersey and Maine can get in on it. We provide all of the materials that they need and we'll see the robot and the drones uh, in a little bit. Yeah. Um, we provide you with the materials that you need to take part in the national challenge and uh, that's the year-long program that runs from the fall until mid-spring. We actually just closed that down. We're doing the evaluations for the mission development logs for the teams that submitted, and we'll be announcing those in about a week and a half. Mm -hmm. You're not self-conscious walking around in a NASA suit, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I lived, oh, good Lord, I lived to wear this suit. <laughs> well, um, so just to finish the thoughts on the program, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm, how have you been trying to spread the word thus far, and how can our viewers help spread the word about this, this you know, coming in the next few weeks, essentially? Well, they can do one of two things. Okay. Um, we'll go, when we go back, um, they can scan the QR codes. I think it's already come through, so okay. people can do that scan right through the video. Yes, they I, can. I zoomed in on that, okay. And uh, everyone that applies to the two summer programs, um, I will send a Nespy sticker or two <laughs> as a thank you <laughs> oh for applying. Oh, wow. Like I said, um, we can support uh, 50 students for the Explore Mars Academy and 20 students for the High Altitude um, Balloon Academy. And I really have not had enough ch enough time to promote them as much as I can. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, apply and I'll send you a sticker and you'll get acknowledgement that you've applied. And we will be selecting those students very soon. And I'll even do that for the educators and teachers that want to look for the uh, Icy Worlds mini mission and the James Webb Telescope mini missions also. Well, yeah, that, without thinking about it a whole lot, Deanna, I mean, I'm thinking like, 
if a viewer knows a public school teacher mm -hmm. or a private school teacher, whatever, school teacher with some kids that they know might be interested in this, that's the kind of network I think that we're that trying to establish. It is, right? yes, yeah. of course. Um, yeah. You can email me at Deanna, D E A N N A, at N W E S S P dot org. Oh my God. And I will be happy to reply to you. <laughs> Well, you got your own. Not, it's not even a central email address. Wow. Uh, okay. We don't want anything else going to my central email address. No, I got you. I feel you. Uh, how about a little bit about you personally, if you don't mind? Where did you grow up and how did you find yourself in the world of physics? Um, I kind of have lived almost all over the U.S. Yeah. Um, I'm a California girl by birth. Uh -huh. um, and my father's job uh, kind of moved us all around the U.S. Lived in Texas and Tennessee. Uh, ended up graduating high school from Virginia. Mm -hmm. Went to school for two years for South Carolina at University of South Carolina where I thought I was going to be a broadcast engineer. And I changed my mind. My parents had managed to move from Virginia to New Jersey in the time while I was at school. So I transferred up to Rutgers, got a degree in communications, worked at my dream job, which was CNN um, as an intern. Oh, so wow. yeah, Morning. met my husband, uh -huh. got married. Um, hi, Bruce. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as they say, the rest is history. Yep. Somewhere along the line, family, kids. Um, I was really fortunate in the late 90s to work for a little company called Digex, which was an internet service provider okay. in the DC area. And we went national. We were the first independent national company. Huh. So if you wanted to learn something, Doug or John or Cheryl would say, here. Yeah. <laughs> and so they kind of gave us free reign and got to learn everything that you would ever want to know about internet mm. routing, mm -hmm. internet engineering, wave division multiplexing, time division multiplexing. Uh. Um, so it was a great opportunity. So how about the transition to the world of academia? <laughs> That's not an easy transition. No, uh, that was another one of those jobs that I didn't think was real. Yeah. Um, Upward Bound at University of Hawaii oh. was hiring oh. and they're looking for someone that had an interest in STEM. And I was like, I can do that. Yeah. And I had been doing it, but not being paid, helping high school students get to college. So I was like, I apply. And I'm like, is this a real job? They're going to pay somebody to do this? And I got hired. And yeah. I worked under Lynn Wood for six and a half, seven years at Upward Bound University of Hawaii and loved it. And like uh, I said, saw this come up. Yep. And it was a real job. They pay me to do this. Please don't tell them I said that. They made stop. Uh, they're not watching, but most of us are watching, and, and you're doing great work here. I hope you, I, I keep trying to remind you of that, like, you know, sometimes you feel like you're really working hard and like nobody's noticing, but we're noticing, so. Thank you. You bet. All right, well, this looks like a familiar place. I let's, think I've been let's, here before. Let's, let's head in, and uh, who was I walking with earlier this week? Somebody... Oh, it's Jordan Carey. He's like, I've never even seen the inside of the planetarium because he's new, you know. So ah, let's go in let's and take a peek. You know, I don't have the keys to get in there. so it's um, a I do, and I think I left it open for us. Good. I hope I did. Otherwise, I'll have to go in my office and we won't film in there. <laughs> okay. right. So uh, lighting construction. Okay, so mm -hmm. they paid a little money to put their name on this, maybe. They did, okay. and we owe a, a huge debt of of gratitude for them for our building. It's beautiful. It, is. it has all of the toys you could possibly want for a physicist. Yeah. Well, I agree 100%. Good morning. <laughs> and uh, so this, uh, so folks uh, excited about coming to see the building. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I'm afraid this is not going to be just propped open like this. Uh, but uh, this is a a featured portion of our building and uh, there have been some public programs Saturdays at noon it feels like and maybe some evenings. The Astronomy Club hosts yeah. star parties during the academic year on Tuesdays and on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month at 8 p.m. and they're open to the public. Oh, now we got to stick to it. I mean now we we're, we're stick announcing to it. that now. Okay <laughs> all right. 
Well, please, after you, and yeah, okay. we're going to finish in here, and, and Deanna had a few things to share with us, back to the details of the program that we're promoting. Oh, shit, man. Maybe I should have Peter, like, or somebody, se a, a separate video. Maybe we should do, I don't know if the camera could handle this, but it'd be fun to do a little planetarium show for these guys. Anyway, getting distracted. All right. <laughs> So it was literally half an hour ago, I'm like, Deanna, how about we do one of these? And then she scrambled and you grabbed this. So these, these must be um, uh, specific parts of your program this summer. So can you yes. give us a little tour of what, what, sure. what roles these have? So um, for our Explore Mars Academy, um, the students will be working with the EV3. These are the Spike Rovers, but we have EV3s also. Um, we loan equipment out to educators and organizations, so it just so happens that all of our built EV3s are out on loan. What's an EV3? Um, that's a Mindstorm robot. It's okay. a little bit larger than this. It was the predecess predecessor mm -hmm. to the Spike, which is this version. Okay. Um, and so we've kind of transitioned to the Spike robots anyway, so yep. this is what we'll be using in the future. Okay. Um, if you're an educator or teacher, um, depending upon what our challenge is for the year, we'll be sending you the equipment that you need. For the educators that take part in the um, James Webb Telescope, we have telescopes that we will loan out on permanent loan to you. Um, if the challenge, the national challenge that we're doing is uh, geo, um, uh, biologic based, mm -hmm. then we may be sending you out um, a couple sensors, um, a digital microscope or a folding microscope. The drones are part of the national challenge also. So all of this equipment goes out on permanent loan or long-term loan to educators or organizations. So you're saying you got a storeroom full of these things we ready to be sent out? We have a out? storeroom full of these things that, yes, we're, we're waiting to send out. We'll actually be getting equipment back from our national challenge that just ended. We'll be getting that back probably in the next two weeks. Okay. So, yeah, our storeroom is going to get even crazier than it currently is. So, yeah, no, um, our goal is to get students and teachers involved in NASA science-based activities. And there's stickers here. And there's stickers here. These are the stickers you were talking These about? are the stickers we're talking about. So uh, NESPI, Northwest Earth and Space Sciences Pro Pathways. And then this was the challenge, uh, the roads, roads, which is uh, Rover Observation and Drone Survey. <laughs> On Icy Worlds is the challenge from this year. And then our uh, Rover Observation and Drone Survey sticker. So each year is a new one. Promo for next year's uh, uh, event yep. is going to be Artemis, Artemis Roads. So Artemis is the challenge or actually the mission that's getting ready to happen with NASA. They're yeah. getting ready to launch for Artemis, which will be putting the first humans on the moon. Mm. So our challenge next year is based on that. Oh my gosh. I'm excited and I'm not even part of this thing, <laughs> but I mean, I can feel the excitement and, and I know that you will make this all happen. It's one thing to just kind of dream it up when you, you know, make a proposal or whatever, but you need somebody, you know, making it happen, like the point person, the detail person. That's you. <laughs> That's you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. When the students are running around campus with uh, doing the activities for the summer program, it just makes it all worth it. Yeah. And I've been very, very fortunate and I've been a part of a number of organizations that have made a huge difference in the lives of students. So mm -hmm. I have to pay it back and I, I could do it every single day, 24 hours a day yeah. and not get tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. You're a natural. <laughs>